Oh, it's so easy today with digital tools to tell visual stories. All you need is your smartphone and a blog. You know, you can capture video stories on your smartphone and, and post them and develop an audience for them on, on Medium. Uh, share, 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 not just on one social site, but on every single social site, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat. So um, it's never been easier to share stories. From cave drawings to family histories to stories around the fire, humans crave order among chaos, connection amid isolation. So we tell stories. Our mission at the Storytellers Network is to bring the art of story to the masses. Whether you're in marketing, you're an entrepreneur, or you're developing your own personal brand, telling your story effectively can make the difference between celebrating milestones and collecting unemployment. The Storytellers Network strives to help storytellers tell their stories so you can learn from the best. Now, your host, the inbound evangelist himself, Dan Moyle. Welcome to the Storytellers Network podcast. I'm glad you're joining me today. In this episode, we hear from Sarah Hill, founder of Story Up, which is, by the way, uh, a, a tribe of storytellers, psychologists, uh, developers, filmmakers, audio engineers, and technologists, uh, who all began in 2015 trying to find a solution for terminally ill World War II veterans who were not able to physically travel to see their memorials in Washington, D.C. Uh, these men and women, basically, they could not physically go on what's called an honor flight. So Sarah and the team started Honor Everywhere, uh, which came out of Story Up. And these veterans experienced an, an immersive event where they get to, quote, go to the World War II Memorial in D.C. and have a tour of our nation's capital. It is absolutely incredible. Uh, personally, I had the opportunity to work with Sarah and uh, her partner in Honor Everywhere, Michelle Spry, showing Honor Everywhere to local vets here in uh, southwest Michigan. I even got to take it to my great uncle Bud in Southern California and show him his memorial he was not going to be able to make that trip. It is absolutely fantastic. And now Story Up's virtual reality experiences reach so much further, which you will hear about during our conversation. Now, before we get there, just a quick reminder to find us online at thestorytellersnetwork.com for more episodes, for how to contact me and other resources to help you tell your story. Uh, and if you like what we're doing here, please share it everywhere. It's, uh, it's a lot of fun speaking to storytellers and bringing these stories to you. Speaking of, Let's get to those stories. So thanks, Sarah, for, uh, again, thanks for joining me today. I appreciate you taking time to talk to the Storytellers Network listeners. Absolutely. I'm excited to be here and share about Story Up and our product called Helium. I love it. Um, so you are uh, calling in because you're on the road and you just came back from China. You travel all over the place. Uh, where, where is home for you, though? Yeah, home for us is in Columbia, Missouri. My co-founder is also in Eugene, Oregon, and we have clients and collaborators um, and love to work with our creators from all around the world. So we are that tiny blue dot <laughs> on your phone, wherever that may be, but located in the Midwest, smack dab in the middle of Missouri, right between St. Louis and Kansas City and Columbia. All right, right on. And so you've got clients around the world. So proof then that a, a storyteller uh, company, storytelling company can be, you know, that doesn't have to be in a, in a Mecca of like Hollywood or New York or something like that. So that's really cool. Yeah, no. And there are a lot of strategic advantages to being located in Columbia, Missouri, and not one just being the low cost of living. Um, there's a great pool of digital creators, uh, thanks to the Missouri School of Journalism, right here in, uh, with the University of, of Missouri. Mm -hmm. And you're also equidistant to both of the coasts. So that that's great as well. Yeah, that's really cool. So so Story Up is a I mean a storytelling company. Do you personally, Sarah, consider yourself a storyteller? Yes. Um, and a lot of people who are the CEOs of their own companies are storytellers as well, although they just might not realize it or not might not hold that that title. To me, all founders and, and CEOs of, of companies, they are their chief storytellers. And you're not just selling your product, you're selling your story. And because of that, um, uh, you know, uh, people who were brought up in the storytelling business make natural um, founders for companies because they know how to craft a well-told story. 
And what if those um, owner, the, the the head honcho, the owner of the business, the storyteller, I mean, the, the CEO, uh, founder kind of person, if they haven't thought of themselves as a storyteller, what's an encouragement that you give them to say, no, here, let me show you how you are a storyteller. Where do you start with them for that? Um, I always encourage people to be good listeners. In order to be good storytellers, you have to know how best to craft your own company story. And that comes from listening to how other people describe your company. So for instance, um, StoryUp is a virtual augmented and augmented reality um, company with a product called Helium, H-E-A-L-I-U-M. And it's for areas of acute situational or workplace stress. These are virtual and augmented reality experiences uh, stories, if you will, that are controlled by a brain computer interface and the user's emotions. And um, in order to understand, uh, you know, truly how to best craft your story, uh, you need to go around and have little listening uh, uh, sessions, um, eavesdrop on conversations where you hear people talking about your company. And to me, that's been really valuable for us to better understand how best to position our, our product in the market and to describe what we do, because what we do is complicated. We're, we're working with technology of virtual and augmented reality and brain computer interfaces and a new kind of media where it's not just storytelling, it's story living with your own biometrics um, controlling these experiences and these stories. So um, when you have a complicated value proposition like we do, it becomes uh, paramount to um, success, to be able to accurately describe and tell your own your own uh, business's journey. That's really cool, and that doesn't mean <laughs> that that sounds very complicated. I I remember it, you know, when when you and I worked together on on uh, bringing you here for the honor everywhere. It was like this idea that the the virtual reality and augmented reality storytelling in that that almost like an Oculus type thing, you know, with your your phone or whatever it is can can immerse you in an area that can reduce your stress. Like I could go to China like you just did, but not have to leave my country um, and, and use that for different stress relievers. Is that kind of what it comes down to for what story up does? Yes. Um, we cr- have um, kits. They're called helium kits and they don't work with a mobile device. They make them now that are completely standalone. Hmm. And these are virtual reality and also augmented reality environments that you control with your thoughts and emotions. And you're physically able to travel to some places like, for instance, in, in the case of those, those veterans with the great work that you and others have done with um, Honor Flight and, and our program that's a virtual tour that provides these tours for veterans who aren't able to physically travel. Um, you know, helium kits are also used in, for nurses, for compassion fatigue, uh, any, anything that sucks that you have to wait through, story can be trans, transformative and transportive. Uh, to take you to environments where you aren't necessarily able to physically travel. So these are walks in the park for people who might not be able to physically take a a walk in a park, either due to a disability or to a work circumstance. You might be on an aircraft carrier out in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, uh, far miles away from the beach in Riviera Maya, but we can put you on the beach inside these goggles. And not only that, um, we we have data to show that it affects the anxiety levels or the stress reactions and your feelings of positivity in your brain. Man, that's incredible. That is, that, it, is, it is amazing what we can do now with technology. You know, I, I think about storytelling as this like old craft of, you know, passing down history, telling stories, bringing people and drawing them in all through like either oral or written. Um, video has changed that. But now, my gosh, it sounds like VR and, and AR are changing it even more. Is that did you did you get into that on purpose? Did you? I mean, how did you get into this VR AR world with this? Yeah, kind of by accident. We were trying as a storyteller. I was a, a television journalist for for decades um, in the Mid Missouri area, and my beat was the veterans beat. And we were covering a lot of stories as it related to veterans on a program called Honor Flight. Um, Honor Flight is a great national program that takes these veterans on free physical flights to see their memorials in Washington, D.C., but what we were founding after we founded the local uh, hub here in Columbia, Missouri with a great group of of, um, volunteers who are still leading that charge today is that some of these veterans weren't able to physically travel. They were on too much oxygen, 
Um, they weren't able to leave their wife who had Alzheimer's or a, a variety of different scenarios. And so we needed a way to bring virtual, to bring the memorials to them. So we created one film, uh, a VR film a few years back at the World War II Memorial that allowed the veterans to be inside the goggles and, and feel like they were there. Um, we had been doing something similar, live streaming some, some in-person tours via Google Glass um, uh, back in uh, 2013. And we needed a, a better solution because uh, Google uh, had pulled the Glass program and there were some bandwidth issues as it related to, to the hardware. So inside these goggles, those veterans can be anywhere. And since then, we've, we've done experiences at the World War II, the Vietnam uh, Memorial, the Korean Memorial, and also the Women Memorials as well. And all of these experiences are, are on the helium, helium platform. There's a, a tab called Honor on there. And um, they're just ways that, that people can feel like they're there, even if they aren't able to physically travel there in person. So I've already forgotten the question that you asked me originally. <laughs> um, if you, oh, a virtual and augmented reality. Um, so that's how I got into it because when we started giving these tours to these veterans, these virtual tours, we noticed that it appeared to be affecting their physiology, that it was as if they just weren't watching these stories, they were feeling it, like with their body. We would see their bodies relax. It seemed to us as if they would take, you know, deep sighs and deep breaths and their respiration pattern seemed to us as lay people that it was slowing. And so we decided uh, to study what are these experiences doing uh, to physiology um, and more specifically to, to the brain. We had one particular veteran who uh, during the experience his caretaker told us uh, he does not have the ability to raise his arms. You will have to put the goggles on him because he can't move you know, his arms. Well, halfway through that virtual reality experience, that veteran had his arms above his shoulders <laughs> to try to reach out and touch some of those people that he saw in the goggles. And, you know, it just got us to thinking, you know, what drug would do that for some? There isn't a drug, you know, out there, you know, that, that could, you know, do that level of, of, of motivation. And it really struck a chord with us that maybe there's something beyond, um, uh, in addition to the virtual tours for veterans that could have therapeutic value for these individuals. And if that's the case, we as storytellers need to know exactly what kind of experiences are affecting the brain and can we replicate that um, to have greater value to the individual who's using it. So we teamed up with the Neuromeditation Institute in, in Oregon. We did a handful of pilot studies, um, Frontiers in Psychology and the Journal of Neu Neuroregulation uh, both recently released uh, studies about how helium affects the brain. And after four minutes, uh, of one of these experiences, it um, reduced the reduced self-report uh, moderate anxiety in a group of anxiety patients. It affected the anterior cingulate, which is associated with stress and high beta activity in the brain. And it increased feelings of positivity or gamma asymmetry in a group of firefighters. So there, these are data-driven experiences that have um, been placed under a, a bit of a, a microscope to say, um, you know, what, what are these experiences doing to the brain? And also we're using your emotions as an input. So helium uh, works with a brain sensing headband or, or brain computer interface. It sounds like a big bulky piece of technology, but it's not. It's just a headband, a, a muse meditation headband is one of the pieces of hardware that we work with. And it, it's, it fits on the forehead. It measures the output of your left frontal gamma, and that gamma asymmetry, as it's called, is associated with feelings of positivity. So we're using those feelings of positivity, putting it inside a game engine environment, and allowing your thoughts to control different assets and, and areas of the story. So for instance, um, the more you think positive thoughts, the higher you float up the side of this beautiful waterfall in virtual reality. The more you think positive thoughts and the more, and you see your own brainwave patterns displayed inside the goggles. The more you think those positive thoughts, the more that blooms come and um, bloom on a tree. The more that, that uh, graffiti erases off the wall, the more trash goes away. 
the more flowers grow and, and come into your, your field of view. You can make the sun shine brighter with your thoughts. It's using your body, essentially, and your own biometrics as a cursor of, of sorts uh, to control the environment. And that's you know, really what story living is. And Google coined that term, uh, story living. Um, you know, it's not just storytelling. It's, it's using your own body and emotions to control the experience in a way that has, that has therapeutic value for people. That is absolutely science fiction to me. <laughs> That's amazing, sir. That's yeah. okay. do, do you think? Well, we call it the pseudocles in a way um, um, because it's not any kind of replacement for any kind of drug or psychotropic medication yet. We don't have data to show that. But we do have data to show that temporarily it's changing the brain, much like a warm bath or a walk in a park or um, something similar would, would, would might temporary, temporarily shift your brain patterns. But for people who can't go to those places, you know, this, this is an, an alternative. And so as, as a storyteller, are, are you torn between what is driving the experience? Is it the technology? Is it the story? Is it the experience? Is it everything? Is it just this whole new, like this whole new thing? I mean, what's driving that experience? Do you think? Mm -hmm. um, there is no particular sector um, on that table. And I kind of see it as a table leg um, on the different legs of, of a table. If you have one leg that's shorter than the other, it, it's out of balance. So around the storytelling table, if you will, the individuals who we have creating these experiences are not just the storyteller. And, you know, I think that's an um, interesting trend to put out there that storytellers are no longer singular entities that are working in silence, either with, you know, uh, just, just writing um, or just writing for, for, for video. Um, it's a collaboration. And one of the legs on the table is a storyteller. The other leg on the table um, are technologists. So, for instance, uh, a game engine designer, uh, Ricky Rockley is our XR design lead, and so he crafts all of these experiences in a game engine, uh, and he has a seat at the table. The other person who has a seat at the table at crafting these experiences is my co-founder, Dr. Jeff Tarrant. Uh, he's a licensed psychologist and neurofeedback expert. He writes the algorithm to know what kind of percentage shifts in gamma asymmetry do we need to import into these environments in order to make them be manipulated in a certain way. He also tests all of, all of uh, these experiences to be able to know, okay, how are they affecting, um, or even are they affecting physiology? And then the other seat at the table um, are the individuals who work in our, our video department. So we not only work with com computer generated stories inside game engines, but we also create 360 degree 3D stories using virtual reality cameras. And so, um, you know, together, those are, are some of the individuals from the science community, the medical community, uh, the technology community, and the storytelling community who really have to lock arms uh, together in order to craft these experiences because, you know, overused term, but it takes a village, but it does in order to write a, uh, and craft a story now because there are so many more inputs into that story beyond just video and audio now. That's so cool. And do you think this is the future of storytelling, not just therapeutic, but just in general? Are, are we going to get to that point where this is how we uh, consume our stories? Yes. We know from, from research that story is one of the most important ways that we learn, right? Our brains are wired for story. We understand things when they're tell, told in a storytelling um, venue, way back into the days when, when we as early humans were, were writing on the walls of, of caves. So because of that, it's a very powerful tool story has to be almost, to, to be therapeutic to people. Um, because through that story, after they take off the goggles, and um, maybe they don't have the goggles near them, it rewires your brain or creates virtual reality stories, create unique memories uh, in the brain that can then be recalled in a stressful situation. So uh, you might not be in the goggles floating up the side of the waterfall, seeing your positive thoughts guide you, but outside of the goggles, you know, you, uh, 
get in a stressful situation. Um, you know, maybe it'd be you're a teacher at a school and a student really, uh, you know, uh, 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 mess with your uh, emotions that day. Well, you can take, um, you know, a, a brief respite and uh, imagine, you know, being on the base of that waterfall as a guided imagery or, or visualization for people that psychologists, you know, in the, the non-VR world have, have been doing for, for decades with guided imagery. So it's, it's guided imagery, it's, it's story, um, and it's virtual and, and augmented reality and environment. And, you know, the difference between those two, virtual reality is inside the goggles and it's a completely closed environment. Augmented reality, you might think of, of Snapchat and it's on a spectrum. It can, augmented reality can be in glasses, but they are transparent. So you see the real world underneath these holograms. Um, so, for instance, just with your iPhone, with um, a Helium AR experience that we'll be releasing in the next couple weeks, you can control um, butterflies. You can hatch butterflies out of a chrysalis just using your positive thoughts. And that experience is a story about change and about metamorphosis and how change in human life takes time, just like it takes time for you to hatch these butterflies from this chrysalis using, you know, this brain sensing, sensing headband. So it kind of sounds, uh, you know, out of this, this world and a little bit far-fetched, but until you, you experience helium, um, do you understand what it's like to see your neurological reflection for the very first time and to know that it has power, not only in the virtual world, but then outside of the goggles, your thoughts have power in the real world as well. And, you know, that's, that's what we're trying to do with, with these virtual reality stories is to be a self-awareness tool. And this could be something, I mean, I'm just thinking this could be something is for as low on the spectrum of issues as slight anxiety all the way up into PTSD um, and above. I mean, this, this has ramifications on kind of everything, doesn't it? It does, but I'm careful. It has potential um, if, if uh, good people out there uh, take some time to study it. But I'm very careful to, to tell individuals this is not a treatment for PTSD. Um, we don't have any data to support that. All our data is on uh, anxiety patients mm. and um, uh, feelings of, of positivity. So I, I, I don't want to make that leap or make any connection that it's any replacement for any type kind of psychotropic medication because it's not. However, there are great researchers like Dr. Skip Rizzo um, with a product that he has called Brave Mind that does have data to show that virtual reality is beneficial for post-traumatic stress. So there are other creators um, out there and the good work that he's doing in, in his lab um, you know, in, in making studies and science-based, you know, decisions um, on some therapeutic tools for, for individuals as it relates to post-traumatic stress. But yes, in, in general, you know, not just helium, but virtual and augmented reality have the, the, the potential to um, help a lot of conditions. And stress management is a part of a, a lot of conditions out there. Stress is responsible for 60% of all illness and disease. 60%. The World Health Organization calls it the 21st century epidemic. You know, we can't keep popping pills. We need drugless alternatives that can just give our brains a break. That is incredible. I, man, this, <laughs> I, uh, the, the power of story is just unbelievable and and you're so you're talking sarah about this story on a whole new level this this new frontier it, it feels like but that wasn't where you started i mean you re-referenced being um a, a reporter uh you i would imagine been, done other storytelling things you know videos this kind of thing but where does that start for you you know we, I, I, listeners can look at you and say oh my gosh sarah is traveling the world she's on this new frontier of storytelling but but you started somewhere where did you kind of realize that you had that gift of storytelling Um, ooh. probably covering the city council beat, I guess, as, as a young reporter, um, I, I would, you know, learned and developed 
being a story nerd. I got really passionate and excited about people who had fascinating stories. I wasn't so much interested, uh, you know, in the, the bureaucratic, he said, she said, I wanted to know what does the person on the city council do in their spare time? <laughs> you know, <laughs> what, what are they passionate about and how can I capture that in a story, you know, that, that tells it about them. So I, you know, and through, you know, my training at the, the journalism school, learned to view the world um, as a whole through one, one big story. So, you know, as a young reporter um, telling those stories, I developed an affinity for good ones and ones that could be told in a way that could be perhaps inspiring or motivational to people to take action, whether that be to uh, support a particular charity or a, a particular cause. I, I, I kind of gravitated towards those people's stories, um, I guess you will. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, that's, and, and that's where I developed that love of story is through listening to thousands of, of people share their, share their stories. And, um, you know, in the 25 years of my career, I, I never tire of listening to someone's stories. I was just on the phone with an individual day who was sharing her story about anxiety with me. And if you've read anything about you know, my story, you know, as a journalist, I covered some uh, journals cover awful things, rapes, homicides, murders, mass shootings. You know, we covered the aftermath of the, the tsunami and we had to we have to listen to a police scanner every day. And your job every day at work is to report and share with the world this is what what's happened today. And it, it takes a toll on not only in journalists but on first responders as well. And that's one of the reasons um, why we developed helium was from a you know a personal need <laughs> to have some virtual peace when you have all of this crazy stuff you know, that's going on in, in the world from your kids to your activities to, you know, things that are happening in the, the political climate and, and war and, and trauma. You know, we need to be reminded that there are some, some, there is beauty in the world and that people do, you know, love and care about each other. Um, and helium is, is, is one of the ways that, that we do that. And again, born out of, of my story, of, of being a journalist and developing of an affinity for listening first. And, and that's key as a storyteller. You have to listen first to figure out what that story is. So, so you're as a storyteller, you're not just making up stories to tell you're sharing those, you're listening and then sharing those stories with a wider audience to help tell those. And you, you know, inject your voice a little bit, but you're sharing those stories and living those stories is what it sounds like. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and in our experiences, we we weave in real stories of of real people. Um, sometimes they're subtle. Um, sometimes uh, it is a you know uh, a story about empathy, where you learn about an individual who has to crawl on the ground because they lack mobility in Zambia. And you're placed right in front of that individual and, and, and they are crawling towards you inside, inside the goggles. And um, you're, it's as if you are, you know, right there and living it um, all inside 360 degrees of virtual reality or, or computer generated in, environments. Um, and so, yes, these, these are real stories for real people. There are some just experience driven um, on there, but even then, for instance, with, you know, our butterfly uh, experience, it's a story about metamorphosis and how change, uh, just as in a butterfly's life takes time, change in human life also takes time. Mm -hmm. Good lessons. Um, so your, your team, and I know it's not just you, but your, your team, you, <laughs> this, this whole experience is, is changing lives. Um, do you have a story that has changed your life that you can kind of pick out and say, this is why I do what I do? Or are there, or are there too many? <laughs> <laughs> um, of all the ones you mean, of, of ones that we've told over the years, just any, just any um, story that's it, changed yours. Yeah, I mean, yeah, um, you know, gosh, there are so many, I, and you know, one of the the paramount ones that are etched into my memory are the dozens of stories that we told about veterans on honor flights. 
and you know um when you listen to those 80 and 90 year old individual stories you really develop an affinity for them um and what they went they went through so you know those stories are the ones that have been impacted my life um the most and then i also told a story um you know many years ago about um a family that lost their home in a in a in a tornado um and then as you go throughout the story you learn that family that lost the tone uh, the the the, it, the story was about their house was being demolished that day and all of the the family memories that they had inside the home from the you know the creak of the wood floor um, you know things that happened on the front porch cooking in the kitchen all of them the memories and and this family was essentially decommissioning you know their their home um, because it had been lost in a in a, in a, a tornado. And uh, you see the family on the, on the front porch, and then in the middle of the story, you learn um, that the family wasn't just you know, a family that I was inter- interviewing, it was, it was my family. Um, and so that's probably you know, the story, one of the stories that impacted me the most, because it was one of the very first ones that I had to tell from a first person perspective. Mm-hmm. So those two things, um, you know, all the veteran stories that we told over the years, and then also, um, the, the story about my own family, you know, having experienced a trauma in their life. Yeah, that's that's powerful when it when it comes home like that. Whether it's first person or whether it's those men and women that you spend time with, when it when it really comes home, it it's that much more powerful. And yeah, yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah. So so technology obviously has has shaped what you do as a storyteller and is continuing to shape that. Um, if if we're we're talking about video storytellers in this season of the Storytellers Network, and if if somebody out there listening is a video storyteller and they want to get those stories out there today, um, I mean, gosh, there's so much there's so much noise. There's so many ways to do it. Where does somebody start if they're you know you, you looking back over your the course of your career and everything that you do? What what piece of advice would you give to somebody that's just starting out on getting their stories out there today? Oh, it's so easy today with digital tools to tell visual stories. All you need is your smartphone and a blog. You know, there are a lot of um, free blogging services out there from Medium is, is a great one that I use. Um, uh, and, you know, you can capture video stories on your smartphone and, and post them and develop an audience for them on, on Medium. Uh, share, 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 not just on one social site, but on every single social site. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, you know, Google indexes, LinkedIn, all of those social media platforms. And so for people to discover your stories, you have to be sharing them on a semi-regular basis so that it generates keywords that can then be discovered um, through search engines like Google or or Bing or something like that. Mm -hmm. So um, it's never been easier to share stories. Um, There are video apps um, video shop is one of the ones that I use on, on my mobile device that you can edit videos, professional quality, you know, looking videos on, on your mobile device and then add voice track to them, uh, add music, add different animations or different effects, graphic overlays, all kinds of things. So, um, you know, storytellers are in a really unique position now to leverage those free virtual tools to enhance their storytelling, uh, enhance their storytelling abilities. Mm. That's called Video Shop. Yeah, so, Video Shop is okay. one of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we'll we'll I'll link to that yeah. in the show notes. That, that's a good one. Okay, Video Leap is another one um, on there as well, and you know everything from iMovie that you know comes for free on some of your your Mac products. Um, you know they're, they're great great tools beyond having to buy you know, a Premiere Pro um, subscription for video editing or, or something like that. You know, obviously, if you're an advanced storyteller you with video, you would you know, want, want something like that. But just practice. And if you, and also, too, don't feel like you have to have, um, uh, you know, to go somewhere big to tell a story. But it's, you know, good stories have nothing to do with geography you can tell an amazing award women story about a piece of trash. I guarantee you a piece of trash. It's all about, um, you know, not necessarily the stories you choose, 
but how you tell them. You know, it's it's the, the storyteller, not necessarily the subject matter, that makes a good story. And I would encourage you, um, and and I've done this before as an exercise. I went um, told a story about a, a, a piece of trash <laughs> to you know prove that that prove that point. And, you know, stretch yourself to try to tell stories about things that aren't necessarily sexy because you learn how to tell a story about a piece of trash on the ground. I guarantee you, you're going to be able to tell an amazing story about a person who's done amazing things. That's cool. So practice and uh, honing your skills are important, not just the distribution of it, right? Becoming a, a really powerful storyteller will develop other things then for you is what I hear you saying. Yeah, absolutely. You're at the stoplight and you are looking at that stop sign. Think about what kind of story you might want to tell. Wow. Isn't this stop sign lucky throughout, you know, all these years, it's weathered snow, it's weathered rain, it's weathered tornadoes, but it's still, you know, they're stuck in the ground and people get to pass by it every day. I mean, it's a little bit of, you know, uh, rambling on in your own, um, uh, uh, you know, imagination on how you can just riff about everyday objects and, and tell stories about them. Um, it, that makes it really easier when you exercise that storytelling muscle than when you do get in a real situation about telling a story either about a business or a person, um, you know, you know how to, how to make those different connections in, in your brain um, to tell those stories. So powerful. Uh, the, the time always goes way too fast when I'm in a great conversation. But uh, uh, before before I let you go, I want to ask you my my big question. This is my my favorite one. Um, it, you are a storyteller professionally, personally, obviously you're obsessed with story. But if someone told you that you could tell no more stories, what, uh, but, but one last one, what would that last story be for you? Oh, wow. Oh my gosh, Dan, that is such a an amazing question um, that you've taken me off guard and I have to think about what would that, what would that amazing story be? You know, it would probably be about my family, I guess, you know, I would want to leave um, the world with, you know, the story of my family and um, you know, the good things that they've done in the world and where they are. That may sound, um, from a selfish perspective, you know, that, that would have value. I would love to, to do a story about my mom. You know, she was a nurse for many years um, and did some, some amazing things in her, in, her philanthropic, in her philanthropic life. And then from a um, non-selfish perspective, uh, I would love to be able to tell more stories about the, the people who are um, not able to physically travel. Some of the veterans that we encounter, you know, on a, a, a weekly basis who aren't able to get out and, and do more things, those, we're losing those guys at a rate of 500 a day nationwide, less than that, because many of them have now passed away. World War II veterans are passing away at an alarming rate. And pretty soon, all of those stories are going to be gone. And there are great efforts underway to try to capture them before they go. But that would be, you know, um, if I had the ability to wave a magic wand, I would say I would want all of those veteran stories to be captured um, in a way that, you know, people could truly understand what they went through and the sacrifices that they made for their, their country um, so long ago. Hmm. So basically, you, you, you won't stop telling stories what that comes down to, <laughs> which is great, uh, <laughs> which is great. <laughs> no. And even, you know, even though I'm not working at a TV station anymore and under a deadline of, of turning stories, you know, as a, a business person and um, with our product helium, you're always, a, you're always a storyteller. Mm. Always. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for that, Sarah. Where uh, is the easiest place for people to connect with you online? You want to leave leave anybody with sure, something? You can go, sure, you can go to storyup.com, S-T-O-R-Y-U-P.com. Um, and if you'd like more information about Helium, which is our virtual and augmented reality um, 
storytelling library for areas of acute stress. With these kits, you can go to Try Helium, and Helium is spelled like heal, so H-E-A-L-I-U-M. Try H-E-A-L-I-U-M, tryhelium.com, and you can uh, get some more information there about how to get helium in your school, in your hospital, in your infusion clinic, dentist office, any, any of those areas of acute situational or workplace stress. Very cool. Well, thank Story you. Story so has power. Yes. Amen. Yes, it does. Thank you so much, Sarah. Appreciate your time on the Storytellers Network. Yeah, Dan, it's great to chat with you. Thank you so much for the opportunity and good luck to the rest of the, the creators in your community um, as they find those, those really amazing stories. So once again, thank you so much to my guest, Sarah Hill with Story Up and Honor Everywhere. Be sure to find Sarah online. You can find those links to the resources she mentioned in the show notes. And if you enjoyed this episode, please consider sharing it all over the place, all those social networks and so forth. Email it to somebody, text it. Uh, just just share, share, share. Uh, we, I really appreciate that. Um, also, if you really enjoy what, what I'm doing here, please consider leaving a review. Uh, in fact, Jeff Large left a review. He's a good guy with his own show. He's a Michigander and someone that I recently got to actually meet in real life finally. It took us going all the way to Philadelphia to meet at Podcast Movement uh, 2018. So it was a, a great meeting. And Jeff says, Dan's a smart guy and a stellar inbound marketer. Happy to see he started his own podcast and looking forward to where it goes. Nice work, Dan. Thank you very much, Jeff. I do appreciate that. Uh, those reviews are huge. Uh, and Jeff, I hope you're still enjoying the show. If you're listening, uh, shoot me a note. If you can, uh, if, you, if you love what, we're, what I'm doing here, leave a review on Apple Podcasts yourself for me. I do appreciate it. You can leave it on Facebook, our Facebook page if you want instead, or wherever you listen to the show. Hey, until next time, here's to telling stories and having those stories to tell. Cheers. Thank you.